Okay, so... All right, now, uh, for those of you who want to join me in the comic uh, commenting, I do have a Dropbox link for you guys to our the PDF of the comic. It's in our um, back back news. It's on our back, back chat. News. It's on our back chat. Our there. backanized. Backanized. Backstage chat? All right. Yeah, backstage chat. So please um, grab it from there. Please do not share out the link because I honestly, I want people to buy this if they are interested. And that was not the right thing to click. Oh man, I miss my 100 meg up and down internet connection. All right, and that's about the best I'm gonna be able to get that. So we'll go ahead and stick it for there. And we'll go into comic reading. And I'm even Yay. more surprised that this actually, that some of the windows on this are working as well as they are here. Uh, um, it's yeah, a PDF link, by the way. It was a black screen. He was like, "What?" Okay. And there it is. Yeah, it takes a sec. Oh. All right, and we're gonna have to remove that. Unfortunately, that doesn't. Well, it does fit, but we need a new image here. <laughs> wow! I immediately find that one. Okay, come on. Where's a? I need a good <laughs> comic image here. Okay, just give me something here. You know what? We'll go with this one. It makes absolutely no sense, but dang it, it works. Time to play some slug. There you go. Alright, we're going to bring the uh, chat up here a little bit. So, chat room, you are more than welcome to comment on the comic as we go. Now, of course, um, the comic issue is Friendship is Magic, issue 42. With what's going on in Pinkie Pie's head, or that's the initial idea, but it does get become a comic about what you know about different uh, art styles, and also a fun story about Pinkie Pie and Rarity making a book. So we got um, three different people here. We got Pinkie Pie, we got Rarity, and we got the narrator. <clears throat> Do you think we should voice act this one or just start going through the comics one page at a time and talking about it? Uh, I would rather go, go through, it. through it one page at a time because we are not here to read them the story. I'm they kidding. I, story. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Let's go ahead and go through it then. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, we, we may comment a little bit on what is said, but obviously, yeah. So... Starting off, Pinkie Pie, in cooperation with Pink Amina Publications, proudly presents a Pinkie Pie short that Pinkie Pie kind of sort of remembers by Pinkie Pie in collaboration with Pink, a Pinkie Pie production as directed by P.D. Pie for Pink, uh, for Pink Propaganda's association with Pie Studios, based upon a story by Pink Amina D. Pie as told to Bittersweet and Lead Wing, starring Pinkie Pie, Esquire. Minor cameo <laughs> appear guest appearance by Rarity and other minor characters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the opening definitely gets up there. And, of course, we already see that the art style is done by Katie Cook. Or is it Andy Cook? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I think Andy Price. Andy cause... Price. Andy Price. Katie Cook was yeah. the right, written. Yep, it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. So, Andy Price does the artwork. Katie Cook does the writing. And I've always loved these when these comics with those two together. They... Just the art style and the story itself, they always seem to work really well. So, we're in for some treats. Also, Andy Price's wife, I believe, helped with this. So, some of the non... You'll see it, but she helped with this. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, he does actually give credit to her in a few cases. Yep. So, so first... The panel of the comic and Rarity's already dead. It's like, yeah, it was Rarity, basically we see Rarity literally having a heart attack to the point. I, I'm surprised that thing didn't launch out of her chest, but yeah. Granted, anybody, sla anybody slamming the door open in a boutique when you're quiet and focusing, yeah, you would feel like you're having a heart attack. So yes, uh, Pinkie Pie comes screaming in, uh, scaring the crap out of Rarity, obvious, stating that she has an emergency. Of course, Rarity immediately thinks the obvious, that Ponyville is under attack again. Or Twilight's in trouble, or somebody's in trouble. 
And then Pinkie Pie, obviously in utter distress, states out that she, for the first time, second time in her life, has no idea what to give a get, what to give a present to somebody. Uh, I did not phrase that right. She has no idea what to give somebody, for, some pony, for a president. And apparently, she also states that she is a question's third best gift giver, which actually makes me wonder who is number one and two. Oh no, wait, Mod's number two, isn't she? Yeah, that's the whole thing. That whole panel right there was a good reference to the gift of Mod Pie. I still wonder who number one is then. Yeah, that's kind of. No, nah, it's just Santa. idle thought, I guess. But no, yeah. The of Santa is that is number one. <laughs> You got me there. Actually, I will take that. Let's go ahead and move on. So, of course, she's lamenting, and Rarity gives us the perfect face for, really. Well, can you just call the 37th best gift given? Isn't yeah. this, like, the exact opposite of what should be happening? Yeah, shouldn't pretty much. Rarity, shouldn't Rarity be the one freaking out and needing her, needing her couch? <laughs> Probably, though I do gotta admit that they, they do keep looking, they keep breaking the fourth wall in this comic a lot. Obviously, you can see Rarity is just looking at us like, "Is she serious? Is this really what the story's about? Is, is this, this what really we've been reduced to?" So yeah, obviously yeah. Rarity settles down, Pinky, saying oh, she'd be more than happy to help figure something out. And Pinky Pie states that she wants to try. She was trying to find out about a book. About a princess being in her birthday suit. Of course, uh, after reading a little bit, we realize that this is the pony take of the, um, ah, crap. Emperor's Emperor's new new Thank you, Emperor's New Clothes, yes. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. So, Rarity decides that, um, Rarity is more than happy to help out. Unfortunately, she used to have a copy, but it was, um, destroyed. And we find out why. Uh, Sweetie Belle! Sweetie, yep, Sweetie Belle decides to use Rarity's old room while obviously she's living in in um, the uh, Carousel Boutique to try her hand at another cutie mark. In this case, her cutie mark in thermodynamics! Fun with acid! Uh, so, so just to point out a few fun things that I noticed in this image here, you got my tiny gecko right behind her head. Uh -huh. Autopsies for fun and profit. Yes, that's also autopsies for fun and profit. How I did it by V. Frankenstein and fun with acids. You also got I want to believe right there on the right side, which what looks like a UFO, but also kind of looks like a hat. Yeah, mm. but it's definitely an X Files reference. Yeah, a lot of different fun references there. And then... Oh, Pony Bell High! Yay! And then that shortly afterwards, uh, Sweetie Belle does what Keen Mark Crusaders do best, and it explodes. I love how oh, this looks like, what the heck just happened? Well, she just got a hole in her wall, and Sweetie Belle's just sitting there, ah, crackers. That, that would be not the thing that I would be saying in that instance. <laughs> it's a kid's comic. We can't cast. <laughs> Plus, she's obsessed. So there go. So Rarity suggests that how about they make the book instead, and they will. It'll be that much more special because they made it together. Of course, they start bringing out the art supplies. Now, a lot of you who are familiar with traditional art are probably already going nuts on this. We got the colored markers that are all over the place. Art pad. Different um, water coloring as well as normal um, coloring, paintbrushes, tools, and yeah, that that whole desk looks like a free, like an art um, art attempt waiting to happen. Yeah, but I also like that the artist, like the little branding that they did on the markers. I yeah. don't know if they're doing like Crayola or Corel type of thing. I'm pretty sure it's a. It, they're kind of off referencing uh, a, a familiar marker brand. Unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with marker supplies. Uh, uh, they're doing it to a fellow artist. That's another way. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I do want to get some thoughts in here uh, from uh, the other people in our uh, peanut gallery of insanity. Uh, Blake, any thoughts? Apparently, nothing. Mm -hmm. He's either he's muted or he's walked away from the headset for a moment. Mm. 
Any thoughts from Suki? <clears throat> it's neat. There we go. Neat. Moving along here. <laughs> so, uh, so Pinkie Pie immediately starts to work with, um, with drawing with the marker and obviously committing the greatest sin of all, pressing too hard with the marker. Mm -hmm. And of course, we get our first different art style. Third, um, third grade, or actually kindergarten marker art style. Mm -hmm. And of course, we get the um, title of the wonderful story: "A Princess Gets New Clothes, but not really because gen generally ponies are naked." By P. D. Pie. And yes, it's naked. They're naked. <laughs> uh, that's Are you a barn? No, a rock farm. Okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Yep. So yeah, Verity immediately admonishes her for the marker, and we get a nice little quip. Um, were you raised in a barn? No, a rock farm. We had a barn though. So da 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 da. And um. yep. And of course, the original title will be just fine with the clap. And of course, it's Pinkie Pie still trying to do things her way, asking, "How about a princess without a stitch, or can we add monsters, a robot, or time travel?" Basically, trying to Hollywood the whole thing. So and they, so Verity takes control as the um, editor, as the editorial staff for the book, and they come up with the first introduction page, which I will admit it's an awesome design: the princess's new dress. Again, done in a different art style. This one is a lot more colorful and wet and um, artistic in design. Mm -hmm. Very flowing as well. Yeah. Now, the one thing that you're going to start noticing in this comic, and I actually noticed it the third time reading it, I will add. Uh, Verity always does things with a classical, very detailed, um, very um, traditional art. While Pinkie Pie does tend to things, do things more arts and crafts, uh, more colorful, and her own style, for lack of a better word, but basically unique in, in their own way. Rarity should be a book illustrator. Drop the fashion stuff and just become a book illustrator. Uh, well, she maybe, but you also got to remember, Rarity does design dresses, and the more detail you can put in the design blueprint, yeah. the more that you're actually going to be able to make the dress, so... I yeah. will give her credit that she can art like that. So, yep, yeah, she draws it, draws it up. Uh, Pinky obviously looks impressed. And they go on to the next page, which um, do, does fall a little bit more into the same art design we saw a moment ago with the Weaver and the Princess. Of course, um, Rarity goes on about how she designed the Weaver to have cunning looking eyes to show the deceit and the con artistry and the princess obviously being a ditz or, or self-conceited and of course Pinkie Pie decides you know what we're going to go ahead and add her own touch to it globbing on paint to the horror of Rarity I have actually seen people with eyes like that it never ends well somebody usually is dead afterwards Dead or dead inside? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By those eyes, my God, the eyes. So, yes. so of course, yeah, Pinkie Pie comes the... up with her version, which has Rarity as the con artist Weaver and Pinkie Pie as the dim-witted princess. And of... Rarity is missing a lower jaw. No, she's just got a massive overbite. Why Pinks didn't take and use her own paper for this one? Never. I don't know either. But just, the fact is that if that face right there was just a witless of uh, rarity right there. Just that would uh, actually make for a really awesome avatar at some point. Just like uh. mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, um, rarity actually comes up with a very good point. You made me the jerk weaver. Why can't I be the princess? Because weaver pony is basically your job. What kind of tailor would I be? Sure. Yep, and Rarity actually concedes the point that Pinkie Pie actually would be a terrible tailor and makes and actually does make sense. And she would actually be perfect as a witless royal. So they finally got that settled. They're going on to the next page, but Pinkie Pie already thought they were five pages in. And we see our next start style, early Lisa Frank. Yeah. 
really what it is. It's really what it is. That, that's pretty much what this is. It's Lisa Frank down to a T. A long, long time ago. In, in a city, city far away. away. <laughs> of course, Rarity immediately objects to this, bringing up the fact that fairy tales should start with once upon a time. They have to. It's the rule. No, I will give him credit. That actually would be not fun to have a fairy tale starting with a long, long time ago in a city far away or something like that. Uh, uh, honestly, it would make sense for a fairy tale to start like that. It would be it would be nicer, but yeah, what are you going to do? So, mm -hmm. yeah, Rarity de decides to bring on the editorial response and removes it and uh, clears out some of the illustrations stating that they don't have any room to even put any text with so many stars and random stuff all over the place. Meanwhile, we can obviously see that Opal there is hacking up a hairball. Happiness for all. Hmm. Alright. So, moving right along here, they start to move on to the next part of the story. Rarity is stating that they should focus on a story outline with a comprehensive style guide. No more willy-nilly haphazard tangents. And we all know Isn't that that's impossible. And immediately afterwards, Pinkie Pie has an idea, running right for a giant, right, right, running right for a bookshelf. Rarity, of course, pleading with Pinkie Pie, please, no more ideas for 15 minutes at least. Pinkie Pie ignores her instead, bringing a giant stack of books with all sorts of art styles, stating, let's try every art style. Rarity has the common response that any commissioned artist would have to this by... Oh, God, no. <laughs> yes, and a oh, giant God. bottle of antacids. <laughs> I bet if this was any other... I'm pretty sure if this was teen, that would be a bottle of vodka. Yeah. It probably yeah, would be. Or whiskey. Whiskey, vodka, what did it do? I'm I surprised... My case is Irish cream, but that doesn't give me... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just get as drunk as you can because this is not going to end well. <laughs> so we get another great face in this comic. Again, this is why I love these duo together. So Pinkie Pie immediately drops it all in, ready for page after page of artistic montage. Of course, Rarity brings up the point that it's called a decoffage. Please, somebody please um, hurt me if I get that pronounced wrong because I swear I got that right. I don't fucking know, dude. The more yeah. important thing, what does it mean? It basically means a, bu a multitude of different art styles. Okay. Essentially. Well, that's pretty much what they're shooting for. Of course, we see all sorts of things flying all over the place. Yarn, ribbons, paint, oil, books. And, of course, uh, Pinkie Pie starts off with a book saying, Crochet for the Thumb Deprived. Yay. <laughs> Oh my god, I crochet a page. Shit. And of course, Pinkie Pie unfortunately also gets a massive paper cut. Considering the fact that they're literally surrounded in papers, we're not surprised. So yeah, we get our us. we get our next start style, which uh, is completely outside ah. of the norm. Little yarn babies. And I am I will be darned if I have yet to see anybody actually trying to sell these over at any um, brony convention. Well, here's the thing. No doubt Mrs. Price made these by hand. Oh, I wouldn't doubt no. that. Some Somebody had to make these by hand. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, those look too good to be drawn. Yeah, though those are not drawn. These are actually photo they, images. Uh, yeah. Photoshopped in there. Well, photoshopped, yes, but they're, they're actual real images that are put into the comic. Of course, uh, Pinkie Pie realizes she has to have wings and a horn, and also does me messy things with her face with tape. Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm, then I'm more of Mrs. Price's work. Of course, I'm pretty sure we've all done that with tape. Yep. And yeah. at this time, um, we act. Mm. Now, this time we actually start getting the narrator coming in, or the narration of the story. T giving us the whole idea, once upon a time, Grand City, there's a weaver, decided to um, knock out the princess because the princess is an idiot. And uh, Rarity immediately asks, does the city have a name? And Pinkie Pie suggests, how about Saddle Sore? In which uh, Rarity decides it's probably not a good idea. Of course we can... 
What happened to them making a book? <laughs> this is them making the book. Mm -hmm. This, this they be like an extreme pop out book. It, it must be. It gets this 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 gets weirder and weirder. This is bar barely the sc scuffing the surface. But Trust yeah, me, magic explains everything in this moment. Actually, at this point, we might as well consider they probably took a picture of this and putting it in the book instead or something. I don't know. But yeah, obviously, probably will be easier. Yeah, the way they're holding it though, it obviously looks like an image, and it's not like an. It, we know it's not an image. We know that's a like a diorama, but they're holding it like it's a picture too. So it's yeah. Try to describe that. You will not succeed. I, I don't think you can. So you yeah. better you're better off not trying and just enjoying the insanity. So and of I course, like how how they photoshopped it just so it seems like it is a, that the brown pod is upon the table if you're not looking at anything else, like mm. just. The focus on the two little yawn things. Well, yeah, it's definitely a pretty pretty good way of doing it. And also to point out that at this point they start off further in the story and they also give Rarity an evil grin and eyebrows. And I have to admit that it, that is hilarious right there, just seeing that. Mm hmm And of course, a uh, nice little detail on little figures there. And Rarity gets upset that she's basically her quote-unquote character is being painted as a villain instead of somebody who's a professional. So she starts to get upset. They yank on the toy and unravels. Of course, uh, we do know we do know that that it that isn't how it unravels. But interesting way for it to unravel the cartoon like that. Yep. So Verity decides to take the hooves, as it were, and begins doing a paint, up uh, painting a picture instead to do the next part, and shows off her, uh, her as the tailor coming up with incredible creations, again leading to another art style. Now this one obviously. Sorry. No, it's okay. This one, obviously, as you can see, it is based off of oil painting. It kind of comes off with that, though. I kind of get a little bit more watercolor look to it. I'm guessing something from, like, the early 1900s to, like, the Roaring Twenties era because of how everyone's dressed and some of this stuff as well. Well, I wouldn't quite go to that pa that far on the dress part, but just the style itself kind of hints at it a little bit. Of course, you could see that um, at the bottom of each of these different art styles, they actually give a description of what they're based on. or Well, as best as they can do. This one was actually based off of an artist called Leon Decker. Or that's the art style. I'm hoping it's either art style or artist. Actually, you know what? Let's do a quick Google search because I have the internet at my fingertips. The power of the net. The yep. power of the neck compels you. J.C. Leonecker, uh, who was one of the permanent art per premium. Uh, he was a very known, well-known well art <laughs> illustrator <laughs> in the... <laughs> prominent. Prominent. Actually, it's pre... Uh, actually, that uh, that might be prominent. Prevalent? Prevalent. No, permanent. Prevalent. Ah. No, permanent. It is to, to, it's It's got to be prominent. It's it's just P-R-double-E, so it kind of throws me off really there. It's weird. I've never seen permanent ac prominent uh, actually spelled out like that. In any case, yeah, it's based off of his art style, which actually we pe we picked it right. It was um early ninth er early twentieth century, like er like nineteen ten, nineteen twenty. Yeah. So we got it pegged right. So we got it pegged right, but yeah, uh, Leon Decker is the uh, artist that the idea was based off of there. So obviously they move on talking a little bit more about um, the storyline. You can see that the art in art is inspired a little bit more. That kind of feels more like Dra like a Dracula image right there, though. I feel like that should be image for, yeah, like for Dracula. Moving on. So yep, she um, starts uh, starts telling more of the story. Prinkie Pie is a dim-witted nimcompoop with a beanie on her head. Obviously, Rarity looks a little too um, impressed for her sakes. 
She ends up ending the story with the fact that Pinkie Pie just gets dressed in weird, silly stuff. Rarity gets all the attention, and she ends up having a successful business because she dressed up the princess like a dork. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Pinkie Pie has the immediate response that I'm sure all of us have for that. Especially yeah, the, the raise the eyebrow, like, <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. And the fact that Rarity even tried to add a prince in half halfway there. So Pinkie Pie decides, you know what, we if you if she can't have robots, she rarity can't have a prince. And they decide they and that's not the way the story's supposed to go, so they're gonna go ahead and continue on with it. This time with clay. Hey, look, they finally used the play doh all right. So yes, little clay ponies are now um, being involved. Of course Rarity doesn't seem to like it too much. Again, perfect expressions. They continue on about how the Weaver convinces the princess that the only only the most awesome ponies, quote unquote, are can see the cloth that the cloth that he she was making. And obviously the princess being a dim wit, um says that yes she can see it just because she doesn't want to admit Yeah, of course that. we all know what this is based off of. We all know what this is based yeah. off of. If you don't, it's time to go back to the children's books because this is a classic story. So, obviously, um, Rarity has to question Pinky's ideas a little bit. And we get a little bit more claymation involved with uh, arting it up. In any case, uh, they're talking about how the story is going to go. How Pinkie Pie, the Princess Pinkie Pie cannot see the fabric. Rarity looking on and then immediately has a response with how annoyed she is with the cl with the clay figures. So Marshmallow now she's a mashed potato. Marshmallow yeah, Marshmallow Hooves destroys clay. And Pinkie Pie has sour cream. <laughs> wow, that is sour cream, huh? Go figure. <laughs> and then and Rarity then decides Lichtenstein. Rarity get yeah, gets a Lichtenstein brand canvas. So off Rarity comes with her own art style and obviously Ooh. trying to vindicate the fact that the Weaver is not a bad pony she just wants to try to teach the princess a lesson and of course we Rarity get a is this is a massive art style that a lot of people would see back in comics that you'd still see it in comics even today in the Sunday paper though not yeah, as much uh, but this this is definitely more of the retro style, like Steve Ditko type of artwork that you would see. Yep. But yeah, that's the uh, different art style they have there. There, of course, they're looking at is like, isn't that a little big? Oh wait, no, I see. Oh, and actually, Pinkie Pie brings it up. I don't know. Doesn't this look like I've seen it somewhere before? And immediately behind them, you see a book open with price. Obviously, Andy with something Price. anti prize, which obviously looks very similar to the image, actually looking very similar to what uh, Rarity was drawing, and also a few books, including is it plagiarism or is it art? Uh, Kubrick. <laughs> no, not Kubrick. Uh, it's it... Kubert. You got Kubert, Romita, Abruzzo, Eisman. I have no idea who these are. Heath. Yeah, uh, it looks like to me. Well, he Heath see. is that last one, but I can't help but wonder if it got cut off there, if it's supposed to be Heath. Yeah, Silver Age! Actually, Silver Age Comics also a great way of uh, pointing yeah. out that particular imaging. Yeah, that's why I said, like, Steve Ditko, because yeah. he and Stan Lee did the whole, whole Marvel thing. Yep. So, they're looking at the big image there. Pinkie Pie gets inspired to do another art style to continue on the story. And thus we get, we get the um, apple corn, uh, banana tea, and the princess new leaf. And if anybody wants to ask, I actually um, guessed on those names immediately. I never thought those up until about five seconds ago. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely similar to how Annoying Orange started out, but only more realistic. Mm, kind of. Uh, at the same time, it is a, it was an art. It is an art style of its own, just using fruit as people or eggs or things like that. 
Of course, Rarity immediately shoves off saying, No, this is too weird, even for you. You're, she's cutting it off. And Pinkie Pie immediately objects, just saying, At least let me have them. Let me eat the cast. I haven't had breakfast yet. So we see an immediate end to um, apple corn and banana tea. And of course, they move on to different art styles. Pinkie Pie suggesting, Why don't they try porcelain? Because unfortunately, it probably wouldn't be a good idea because Rare Pinkie Pie would probably break it because she does tend to be a bit of a crackpot. Interpretive yep. dance. Interpretive nah, dance being an interest. Too many sets and too many costumes. So moving along, they decide to, they go into a different art style. Obviously, this one is based more in the um, actually New York Times political cartoons. Yep, and definitely more of a Wild West type of theme over around that time of style because uh, if you look at some of the hand-drawn wand posters, they are similar to this. Well, that and just the old um, car comic styles in general that they used to use for political cartoons back then. But yes, um, we get a different... It's an ink and pen style, actually, just to put a, a pin on it. So Rarity shows off the ink and pen style. Pinkie Pie immediately has another idea. Rarity begging, please stop having them. We see that she has Tales from the Loft and Heck Cult. Oh, def yeah, this is definitely a good reference to Tales from the Crypt, Tales from, um, you know, the horror anthologies of old, before what? the Comets Code came and shut them down. Really? I thought it was more of a reference to early Hellboy. Nope. Oh, that's a style that hey. they went with, though. But yeah, just this really creepy style altogether. But yeah, it's a lot more dark, a lot more mysterious, kind of white-eyed, really crazy stuff. Um, this one based after artist Mignola. You can even see it right there at the bottom. And of course, Rarity's saying it's a big grim, so they should do something with more color. Pinkie Pie immediately screaming out that she has another idea. Of course, Rarity what being... What did I just say? Yep. And then we immediately go into a break. Of course, this is one that if you have the comic, you can't cut this out if you want and do this or just print this out and do it. I'm not going to do it, but essentially you get to, you're, you're suggested to cut out the characters, fold up a stage that you have here as a folded piece of paper, draw different outfits onto the characters. Oddly enough, i um, asked to make uh, Applejack a disgruntled postal worker, Fluttershy a groovy open neck um, shirt with gold medallions. Spike, a mighty warrior king. Yeah, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, yeah, the uh, you see the script right there talking. Uh, it's actually another part of the art style. It's obviously talking about folding it in, cutting it out, and making that another part of the story. And okay, of course, I like the theater name because it's a reference. I think to Kazumi Evans. Ah. But yes, it also talks about the fact that you can actually make this yourself. Though the funny thing is on the uh, bottom of the Assemble Theater instructions, and these are real instructions, it says, Enjoy, do not leave in the rain. Peak and Associates are not responsible for the quality of plays you may produce. Wait. Yeah. This... <laughs> hey, anyone that remember Far? Uh, that little crazy science fiction show with the Observer. He's uh, back and he's been here before. I have no idea. Well, All right. Lo Lo yeah, we're moving on yeah, and, and the art styles just get weirder. Like art styles get weirder and this is where they really start coming in. So they they're obviously trying to do the folding as they were as we got in that previous page. So Rarity has some ideas instead, starting off with Looney Tunes instead. Obviously, uh, throwback to the joke of princess season right there. You mm -hmm. can see based after Jones. Then shortly afterwards, we get ponies after Schultz. Ha! Yep, so we had Chuck Jones, Charles, and then Chibi. And then, yes, we got the more Japanese uh, otaku style there. And of course, this is, this is when they're trying to finish up the story. The princess, the dim-witted princess, stating that ponies usually don't wear clothes, so she's still perfectly normal. 
and Rarity um, getting disgruntled at the story, saying that is not the way the that is not the end of the story. We need to change it to the real ending. Obviously, Pinkie Pie um, thinking that should be the ending. And so immediately, Pinkie Pie comes up with an art style. The end. Of course, uh, Rarity immediately responding that is not the um, ending either. Uh, but at the any case, they decide that um, uh, organized that the book is pretty much done. Even though this organize um, an artist having organized chaos is um, this isn't it. Though inspired is definitely a word to put to it. Of course, this immediately comes up with Rarity asking if they could try something more normal, and Pinkie Pie stating that she has no clue what that is. Answers a lot of questions. Yep. Well, in, in any case, they decide it's time to wrap up the book. Rarity is stating that it is a very Pinkie Pie-ish gift, and of course, Pinkie Pie losing her mind, and mm -hmm. uh, hey. it's starting to tie ribbons to her hair, which is mm -hmm. kind of hilarious. What color is the sky in her world? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, whatever color it is in that panel. Yeah, there, that is definitely the big question. What color is the sky in our world? And now another oh, Pinky Fold, and this one, this one is based off Man Magazine. So you're supposed yeah. to be able to print this out and then fold it to make, match A to B. Obviously, we, we're not going to do that for obvious reasons, because, um, PDF. So yeah. moving on, uh, Rarity looking about ready to completely destroy Pinkie Pie. And of course, uh, she realizes there's nothing that she can do. It's Pinkie Pie being scatterbrained, and that's why everybody loves her. And of course, Pinkie Pie actually does do a cute thing, so that ends up um, kind of helping out a little bit. So, Rarity finally gets the book together! You can see the horrible mishmash that we just watched over the last few pages being combined together, and Pinkie Pie literally screaming joy in her eyes just as suddenly start ripping the book apart because she th figures that page 17 should be page 3 just to mix things up a bit. And Rar Rarity immediately and has the reaction all of us would have at that point. Dear God. <laughs> and of course... And then we Face pony. Yeah, we get flat face pony and Pinkie Pie smacking her face against the desk a few times. And then uh, Rarity finally asks the question, who is the book for anyway? And Pinkie Pie immediately hands it to her. Stating that the, this is the anniversary of the day they first met. And uh, when they first met, they had a conversation about the book. She, Pinkie Pie found out that her previous book got destroyed by Sweetie Belle's experiment in thermonuclear dynamics. And then decided to check and make sure that she didn't get a replacement one and help make a new one for Rarity. Which was completely warm and endearing until Pinkie Pie decided to slide across the table. Yeah, I have no idea why in the world uh, she did that either. It makes absolutely no context. And then he made Do we really need one? I think Rarity might need one just for the sake of sanity. But Pinkie Pie immediately suggests, why don't we go out and get some smoothies to celebrate as well? Let's bring the book along so we can actually get stains on it just to remember that it is another memory of the day. Since the entire book is going to be a memory of them making a bunch of different art styles together to do the book. And there it is. The story of of issue 42, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, making a children's storybook, which probably would end up either getting somebody poisoned or blown up. Or both. Or both. So, uh, for those of you who were listening to me monologuing about the storybook here for about uh, 15 or so minutes, what did you, th well, no more than that, like 30, what did you think of the comic? Considering oh, that I've read it before, it hit... sorry. Okay, maybe I should start off. Um, blanked. Eh, it's neat. It's, it's a nice little way to see all the different styles that led up to what styles we today. Hmm. All right, and Tokoi. It's kind uh, of like a history in a little bit of a way. 
Yeah, this is definitely a historical thing because you heard me listing off different things. Even the ones I didn't know the name of, I could guess that time period because of how much I've either seen them or how much I've seen them in pop culture when it's been referenced in, like, TV shows. Mm-hmm. It's a very good thing simply because it's a... a it's not just a story, it's a little bit of a historian in perspective on how people have seen the world do art. The only thing I would say that they missed on would be like sculptures, but they did mention ceramics like, oh, we can't do that, someone will crack and break it. A yeah. kind of nice little reference to how many of the Greek statues have had broken arms over the years because they were either made out of a brittle stone, but seemed strong, and then suddenly something broke. Actually, I think the reason that they went for the the breaking part is just the simple fact that Pinkie Pie is a bit of a klutz and would destroy anything by accident. That too. But I'm trying to do something a little bit more artsy, just because. Fair enough. Okay, um, Winchester, uh, do you have any thoughts on the comic? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Haven't actually been following the comic very heavily lately, but yeah. Yeah, we're just talking about this issue, so no worries about that. Yeah, Yeah, but yeah, definitely enjoyed it, just like all of these. All right. And uh, I'll go ahead and go with Suki then. I believe you're the last one out. Yep, and uh, it was neat, but if he's still here. What? I mean, he's talking right here. now. He's talking right now. Sorry. I, my side, I have to reconnect. Yes, you and do. I... All right. While he's reconnecting, Suki, quickly before he starts talking again. Eh, it was enjoyable. That I don't know. I was I, don't know, I was kind of paying attention, but I was also kind of caught distracted by something else. So yeah, you're blowing up people in Destiny, aren't you? Uh, I was. Now I'm not. Ah. <laughs> Alright, so chat room uh, has some thoughts on it too. Uh, DM12 finds it funny and entertaining with the different art styles. Rarity slowly losing her mind. Awesome Brony finds it really fun comic. Love the different art styles, pop culture references. Uh, Silent Blast makes a, the comment of one of the comic covers, Pinky has the fawns. Ba- Pinky Pie jumping the shark, of course. Uh, second, CMC has a point. You didn't give the art challenge for the next week. Yeah, that's because I'm still trying to think it up. Ooh, how about multiple styles in one picture? I am not going to make them do an art deco. I'm going to... art deco. Ah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Any case, uh, here it, I, I will give out the art challenge here in just a moment as soon as we finish the comic here. Uh, we immediately get DJ Jarrah Squirrel, which, yeah, pretty much is kind of half of everything that ever happens with the show, Squirrel. Okay, we're going to talk about Squirrel! No. And <laughs> yeah, now they're talking about Pinkie Pie being our president. I honestly wish. I actually got this comic cover when I was at BronyCon too. So I got both the um, Pinkie Pie with the insane imagery in her head and Pinkie Pie for president. I, I got two comic, two of the same exact issue. Go figure. Uh, and I love the Happy Days reference of, Well, Pinkie Pie finally jumped the shark. Stay tuned. Uh... Alright, so it doesn't look like anybody else is throwing in their opinions on the comics here on the chat room, so we'll go ahead and end our discussion. I hope you guys enjoyed issue 42. And um, DM12, uh, yes, uh, give me a moment on this. The challenge for next week's uh, arc is not going to be Changelings. That would be too easy. In this case, we're going to have the art challenge is ponies disguising themselves as inanimate objects. Hmm. Oh, that's going to be a fun one. Yeah, and I did not post the show notes in IRC chat yet. I'm going to be doing so now. The reason I didn't initially was because of the cookie. I did it all for the cookie. He did it for the cookie. Wrong. The beautiful cookie. No. I did it all for the cookie. Yeah, the cookie. Yeah, okay. I was doing a parody song for Glory. 
And I was doing a parody song of um, something else that I'm probably not going to mention in Polite Company. <laughs>